All right, today we're going to talk about an introduction to performance timing. So how you can check the performance of your script, your web page, how quickly things are running. Now, this is part of the DOM, the document object model, so it's not available in Node. Okay, so I have a web page here. Um, there's a div with the ID output, and I'm going to be writing things inside of here. And I want to measure how long it takes the page to load and to run some script. I'm going to loop 100,000 times and write out different values inside of here. Every one of my 100,000 times, I want to update the content here. Uh, and I'm going to measure how long it takes me to start the page, start measuring, get through that loop, and then write out the difference. The way we do that, I mean, you can do basic timestamps. You can use a date object, but that's really only going to be accurate to uh, a millisecond. It doesn't give you good answers for performance. You know, if something's taking one millisecond or 0.5 milliseconds or um, 0 0.05 milliseconds. You know, there, there can be a big difference, but you could get an answer back that just says one millisecond if you're using a date object. We want to use the DOM high res timestamp object. And this is the thing that is, uh, it uses the millisecond as the unit of measure, but we're going to be accurate to within about five microseconds. So we're going to get a really accurate answer on how long something took to take place. So what do we do? Well, there is a performance object that has been added to the DOM, and this performance object has a method called now. This grabs the current time from when the page started to load. Like it's, it's a time that once your page starts, it starts at zero and it keeps counting up. It's not tied to the current time. It just measures how long it's taken. So performance now gets me the time from when the page started. And then down here at the bottom, I'm doing end time is performance now again. So I have a start time and an end time. And if I subtract the start from the end, that's going to tell me how long this has taken. Uh, the rest of this code right here, this is just my loop. I'm looping 100,000 times. I've got a variable called a set to 50,000. If a is less than i, I'm setting it to a random number. And then I'm writing out that value. So there we are. It's going to set the text content of that output div to this random number or to one of those integers. And for the last 50,000, it's just going to be setting it to the random number. Right, so I'm generating 50,000 random numbers. Really, that's what the, the work here is. When I reload the page, this is one of those random numbers. It's the last random number that was generated. And then in my console log statement down at the bottom, 118, this is the number of milliseconds it took to get from this line, line 12, down to the bottom through all the loops and to the line right after the loops. So this took 118.899999 milliseconds. So this is giving me an accurate answer. So 0.1 seconds is how long it took for the page to load to that point. So everything to this point, including the measuring the time, including the loop, that's how long it took. Now, that's great if you've just got two time spots. If you want to go, okay, from this point to this point, how long did it take? Do two performance nows, subtract the difference, there's your answer. However, if you were going to um, have multiple times, if you want to find out if there's a difference as you travel along, you can use what are called perf performance marks and performance measures. I have down here at the bottom, these are the other methods that we can use. So a mark, it's a lot like performance now. It grabs that performance now value at a certain point. Measure allows you to calculate the difference between two marks. Clear marks gets rid of marks. Clear measures gets rid of measures. Uh, and then entries, that's what's created by mark and measure. So this is kind of saving points along through your code. You can do all that, and then at the very end, after you're done everything, you can either say, okay, give me an array of all the entries, or give me an array of all the entries by type. So I could put measure or mark in here. Or if you've got specific names, you can say, okay, give me the mark called Bob, or give me the measure called Timmy, whatever you like. You can use the word mark or the word measure in either of these two, and then this is the actual name. This will give you an object which you can then write out. Okay, so I'm going to go one step further. Here I'm just doing the performance now, performance now, subtracting the difference. 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here and I'm going to create a mark. So I don't even need a variable for this because it's going to save it for me. I'm just going to say performance.mark and we'll create one called Mario. So I've created a mark right here. I'm going to come down to this point and I'm going to actually wait for the DOM content loaded event. And inside here I will say performance again dot mark and we'll create one called Luigi. There. I've created two marks. I could do more but I'm just going to do these two. And then I'm going to say performance dot measure. I'm creating a measure and I'm going to call it Timmy. And Timmy is going to measure the difference between Mario and Luigi. Okay, so this is sort of like what I did here. Subtract the end time from the start time. I've got these two marks. I'm calculating the difference. This is what I'm calling that difference. Then if I want to write that out, I use one of these get entry methods. Since I've got the name, I'm going to use that method. So we'll say performance dot get entries by name. And I want to get the one that's called Timmy, which is a measure, not a mark. Now, this one I do want to put into a variable because I'm going to reference it. So let Timmy equal that, and then I can log that out. So log Timmy, that will give me the object itself. Okay, run the page. There we are, and performance measure. Inside the performance measure, we have, it's, it's an array, these are entries. So item zero is the first one inside this list right here. And we've got a duration of 118.2 was the duration. This was 115. So there's three milliseconds difference from this point right here where we said performance now and the DOM content loaded event firing. So between here and here, I can extrapolate the fact that there was three milliseconds roughly. And the entry type was measure, the name was Timmy, and 46, that was the time that Mario fired. So this is something else you don't get with the performance now. If I come up here, performance now, and then performance mark Mario, this one, at this point, I was 46 milliseconds into the load and display of this page. So from 46 down to this point here where we marked Luigi. From there to there, the duration was 118 milliseconds. And that's it. That's You can use this. You can use either one. If it's a simple one, use the performance now twice, subtract the difference. Uh, or you can use marks and measures to calculate a whole bunch of different points, measure the differences between the different points, and figure out how much time each piece of your code is taking. Use it as a way to uh, improve the performance of your page very useful tool and it's a great start into testing your code and making sure that it's uh, running efficiently. All right, hope that helped you out. If you did find it useful, please share it. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments down below. And as always, thanks for watching.